Google keeps adding new features to Performance Max campaigns. Some will argue that it actually makes Performance Max better. Others will say that it's just another indication that Google's trying to take away more control from the advertiser. Well, in my opinion, this new feature is a little bit of both because Google lately has really been pushing page feeds for Performance Max campaigns instead of running DSA campaigns. They're saying, of course, that it's going to expand your reach. Well, you can argue which way you want, but we're still gonna cover this and how you can create page feeds within Google Ads. We're gonna show you how you can use them within the Performance Max campaigns and how the setup might be a little bit different than a traditional Performance Max campaign. Before I create a Performance Max campaign, I wanna make sure I have the page feed ready. So we're gonna go over page feeds first. To find page feeds, go to Tools and Settings, and then under Setup, you wanna choose Business Data. I have a few options here from some older videos, but we're gonna start over and create a new one. So click on the blue plus button, and there you see the option for page feed. A couple things about page feeds in Google Ads. You can only have 100 page feeds per account. I have never worked with a client that has been remotely close to that. So it shouldn't be an issue for you unless you have many, many campaigns within your account. The other thing is that if you're really unfamiliar with page feeds and how you should structure them, you can download the CSV template. If you click on it, it's not gonna send you to another page, it's automatically gonna download the CSV file to your computer. And of course, I've already done it, so let me go and open it. In my case, I've already updated it just so we can keep on moving along. So the template itself will have these column labels, you want to leave those as is. And then Google gave me just four examples of a URL, but you will wanna replace those URLs with the URLs you want to use within your page feed. But the template is easy and straightforward. One column for your page URL, and then the second column for custom labels. Now there are a few more things I wanna mention about page feeds just so your feeds do not get rejected. One will be your page URLs. Make sure that you only include a URL one time. Any duplication will cause your feed to get rejected. Another note about format is with the custom labels. Notice how I have everything in capital letters. Spaces for the labels are using underscores. If you want to add multiple labels for a URL, they are separated by semicolons and there are no spaces in between the label and the semicolon. So stick with this format. Since I have this saved, let's go back to Google Ads, and then we can look at a few ways we wanna select the source, but let me get a name in there first. I'll just name this blog feed, and then you could choose your source. I wanted to show you the data feed template just to show you how you have to have your feed organized, but you don't have to use just a CSV, even though that's what we're gonna do. Eventually I will choose to upload the CSV file, but if you have a Google Sheets that's easier for you to update your information, you can choose that option and then walk through the steps to link the specific Google Sheet for this page feed. Other options will include providing additional sources if you have a specific URL that will automatically update or you can FTP and SFTP give Google access and it's another way for you to automatically have your data updated if that's an easier route for you. But this is just our demo account. I'm gonna upload the CSV file. Okay, I chose my file, we'll click apply. We see the status is pending. Google's reviewing it to see if I've made any formatting mistakes but I know this one is gonna be good. But now I want to head back to the main Google Ads dashboard, and then we can start creating our Performance Max campaign. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new campaign. Pretty straightforward. And of course, we have to choose our campaign objective. I'm just gonna walk through one for the sake of this demo. But of course, choose the options for you that allow Performance Max campaigns that are gonna be best suited for your account goals. Typically, my clients want leads, so that's gonna be my campaign objective. Choose your conversion goals, and then let's click continue. And of course we want Performance Max. Go ahead and name your campaign and then click continue. I'm gonna skip the bidding portion because that's gonna be the same for any Performance Max campaigns. Where we wanna go for page feeds will live under your campaign settings. Choose your location and languages. The first thing I do wanna call out for campaign settings is this automatically created assets section. Let me expand it. If I scroll down, you do have the option to uncheck this. Google is going to recommend to leave both of these boxes checked. But of course, we don't always have to do what Google tells us to do. I'm gonna leave it as is for now, but we will be coming back to this setting. Once I close it out, we'll then wanna click on more settings. And if we see here under more settings, there's a page feeds row, and you can click on it to add a page feed to your campaign. I wanna call it out right now. We are not seeing this feature available in all of our client accounts yet. So if you don't have it yet, just keep checking back. It should be available soon. Okay, so let's go into page feeds. And here we see that we can start adding the feeds within the specific field. All I did was just click within the field and then I could choose my specific feed. There you can see if I had more, I could add additional fields, but in this case, I only have the one. I do wanna call out the little paragraph that they have within this section. 
we are telling Google to only use these URLs for the campaign. If final URL expansion is turned on, Google does have the right to use more URLs than are within your feed. But by turning final URL expansion off, you're only going to use the feed URLs. Now, since we know that, you may want to go back up to this section and turn off the final URL expansion. There we see the whole better results thing, blah, 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 blah. But do what you think is best to have the best results for this type of campaign. See, they're trying to have us turn it back on, but I'm not going to do that. If I click next, we will get to the portion of our asset group. Normally, I would just say, fill out the information with what you want, but page feeds can have an impact on your asset group too, because you can specify URLs from different page feeds for each different asset group you may be testing within the campaign. And that you will handle with the custom labels. If I go ahead and pull up the template again, here are my custom labels for this particular feed. So always make sure that you are including custom labels, especially if you want to use page feeds from the asset group level. And depending on the size of your feed, make sure that the labels are relevant to just the URLs you want to use for the desired asset group. Back to Google Ads. So we'll scroll down past all this other information that you need. I'm going to click on more options. And here we see the section for URL rules. So we will need to create a new URL rule. It's easy enough for you to add some manually, but if you have a well-organized page feed, you can use custom labels to make this process a lot quicker. I know this is a weird example because I don't know how many people would use Performance Max to really just promote blog pages, but that's what my feed is. So I'm going to pretend I just want to have an asset group that really just focuses on our Microsoft Ads blogs. So if I go down to Custom Label, and just paste it in the label that I had for the two Microsoft Ads blog URLs I had in the feed, and then I can click Add. If you want to add a couple different labels for this particular asset group, go ahead. You can do that. But you can see when you come back and edit the asset group, you'll be able to edit the label or remove a specific custom label. But I'm good with everything I have here, so I can go and click Apply. And there we see our custom label. And then you would go down, add in your audience signal, finish your budget, of course, add in everything you need for your ads, review, and then publish the campaign. Now, if you are looking particularly at any sort of exclusions, then we have to back up a little bit within the campaign settings. So I will go back to campaign settings. Let's go down here. Let's say we do want final URL on, knowing that we're going to go beyond our page feed. You see there's this option here to exclude some URLs. I can flat out paste the URLs, but here we see the option again to use custom labels to exclude certain URLs. And since I've already added the page feed at the campaign level, it will use the page feeds I've added at the setting. If you remember in the asset group, I was trying to focus on Microsoft Ads blogs. So maybe I would want to exclude URLs with the custom label of Google Ads, and maybe any other label that isn't Microsoft Ads. I could do that too, but no need to waste your time. Pretty sure you get the concept of what I'm trying to do. I would then just apply after I added it, of course, so then any Google Ads URLs that are part of the page feed will be excluded. But since I have final URL checked, it still can go beyond the URLs I have within the page feed. If you're asking why, well, think about it. If I get rid of the final URL, and I'm only targeting the URLs within my page feed, why would I need exclusions? If you're creating a page feed, you shouldn't include URLs in the page feed that you don't want to target. So if you don't want final URL expansion, then clean up your page feed or just create a new one that's more specific to what you want to target. I know I just created a very simple page feed with just five URLs, but hopefully you find it easy to create one, get it uploaded or linked within Google Ads, and then go back and create Performance Max campaigns that are using these feeds. Always create the page feed first. I know I did mine quick just for the sake of this video, but the sooner you have your page feed in there, sometimes the pending status can take a little bit, the better off you're going to be to get your Performance Max page feed campaign up and running. As I said in the intro, this feature is a blend of control and an indication of what's to come. Because as of right now, I love that I'm able to use this. It does give advertisers a little bit more control back into their hands. However, with the emails that I've been getting, as well as the notifications that you may see up here, they're encouraging you to switch your DSA campaigns to a Performance Max campaigns with a page feed. Am I saying that's the writing on the wall for the future of DSA campaigns? I mean, probably. We all know where things are heading. That's all I can talk about with page feeds for Performance Max. If you have any questions on how to set up a page feed, maybe you're running in any Roblox with setting them up, getting them linked to Google Ads, or if you just want to share some great strategies of how you've used page feeds in the past, let everyone know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. 
If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.